right, um, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to do some solving. And the best thing I can help you guys out with the solving is forget about the trick, trick sentence. Okay? When you're first going to be working these, if you're having trouble with them, just treat it like you're going back to algebra one and forget about the trig signs or the trig functions. So to solve this, you guys should know, the first thing we always do is undo addition and subtraction, right? Then we always undo uh, division and multiplication. Okay, everybody understands that, right? That's good. Well for here, it's the exact same thing, except now it's rather than just like a cosine of x, now it's cos, I'm sorry, rather than just x, it's cosine of x. So I'll add 1, divide by 2, and now I get cosine of x equals 1 half. And remember, we've got to think about this. What does that solution mean? <clears throat> well, first of all, what does our x represent? Remember our x, we take the function of an angle, right? It's the cosine of your angle equals 1 half. So then I need to go back and think, oh, crap, I need to figure out what angle does cosine equal 1 half. And then we need to remember, well, what does cosine represent? Remember, cosine represents our x value when we're talking about a coordinate point on the unit circle. So we look at that and we say cosine, when does cosine equal 1 half? And yes, pi over 3 is 1 half. Is that the only answer? No. What's the other answer? Negative two, or negative one over two, and negative three. Well, be careful. Negative if you one over two, it can't. And negative one over where, negative pi. Yeah, one over three. Negative okay. Yes, yeah, so you can have your ne you can have your negative pi over three. But if I was going to look into a positive angle, it would also be five. Five pi over three. Yeah, that was just the answer I was looking for. This one also equals positive one half negative radical three over two. But since we're only dealing with the cosine, we can see that my two angles are 5 pi over 3 and x pi over 3. So therefore, I'm going to have two answers, right? I can say that x equals pi over 3 and x equals 5 pi over 3. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? But now, ladies and gentlemen, remember what I talked about with our graph. Our graph keeps on going on and on and on forever, right? So re in reality, these are my only two points. I also have to make sure I add 2 pi. Well, how many 2 pi's do you add? Do you add just 1 2 pi, 2 2 one, pi's, infinity, 3? Infinity. You're gonna, yeah, well, you need to be able to add as many 2 pi's as possible, right? Because this graph goes on and on and on and on and on forever. So if you're saying when it equals you know, 1 half, it needs to cross that 2 pi here, 2 pi here, 2 pi there, 2 pi there. So we need a, some way to represent adding an infinite number of 2 pi's. And what we use is just the integer n. Okay? Because if n was 0, my answer would be pi over 3. If n was 1, I would just add 1 2 pi. If n was 2, I would add 2 2 pi's, which would be 4 pi's. Does that make sense? So if your answer, if I don't give you a restriction, and I say find the solutions to your trig function, and I don't give you any restrictions, you're going to find your answer. With, remember, you're solving for x, which means you're going to find your angle. Okay, So you're going to find your angle, and then plus any revolutions. And for this answer, it's going to be plus 2 pi. All right? You guys got to try to see. It can't be minus 2 So it would always be 2 pi? No, not always. We're going to go through some problems where you'll see it. 